Hi, welcome to Film Darkly, where I discuss the philosophical concepts found within film. I'm your host, Anthony Paseno, and in today's episode, we're going to be discussing The Dark Knight and the ethical issues found within there concerning human nature embodied. And the reason I say human human nature embodied is because we have a great example in this film of the Joker. So, such as in the last podcast of The Watchmen, where I focused primarily on the comedian and how he conveys human nature and sort of embodies it, what we find in the Joker is a different type of embodiment. An embodiment that is against uh, tradition, society, and um, what is commonly uh, known is as um, the way people should act. And he questions these things. So it really just comes down to both um, tradition and uh, and civilization or um, government, if you want to put it that way. Uh, mostly the the hierarchy that we see in human nature. And I'm not going to go too much on hierarchy because I do intend on doing a podcast about uh, The Walking Dead, which I think has a great narrative on, uh, on um, human nature and hierarchy and how those two... Uh, really come together um, quite uh, quite soundly and quite truthfully probably in a way that people don't want to admit um, we, we tend to see hierarchy as an issue and it is an issue but um, it does have an attachment to human nature that people tend to ignore so putting that aside um, we're going to go ahead and take a deeper look at the dark knight And I'm mostly going to focus um, primarily on the Joker um, using a few quotations like I did last time. Uh, I used a few quotes with the comedian and um, showed um, or exposed how the comedian's character um, understood human nature more so than than his um, his partners and his friends such as Ozymandias and Dr. Manhattan who seemed to, at least Dr. Manhattan, seemed to understand human nature, but didn't understand how to handle it. And Ozymandias, who was egotistical enough to think that he was going to solve the world's problems, whereas according to the comedian, the world's problems wasn't going to be solved until justice was enacted, which is to see the extinction extinction of mankind. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because I, I want to be able to make the attachment from the Watchmen to the Dark Knight, um, so that you can understand why I'm I'm still speaking on human nature, but I'm coming at it from a different perspective, with a different individual being the Joker, whom is, as I said, sort of another example of human nature embodied. Probably not as good. I say that with quotations as um, as the comedian. Um, who is somewhat of a hero at least um, but at least um, you know you're, you have another character um, who is who's living out human nature the way he believes human nature operates so without further ado let's go ahead and dig into the dark knight and looking at the joker and um, one of the first scenes that kind of starts to expose who the Joker is in that he's a man who's going, like I said before, against tradition and against civilization. And I guess you could even say against social constructs, um, which should have been my third example from the, from the get go. One of the, um, we, we kind of see that arising and, 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 what I mean by by him being against those things is because the Joker is really an atheist, an anarchist, and he's clearly somebody who is a who's distinctly an empiricist, but possibly to the most extreme form 
of that. So atheism fits the the uh, category of tradition because traditionally people tend to believe in God or some some sort of God at least and some sort of religion whereas the Joker seems to be completely ignoring that. We never really get the Joker to come out and say I don't believe in God. But it's it's obviously exemplified in some of the things he says. It's it's very much so there and you, you, you can you know I think we can all pretty much assume the Joker would not have believed in God. Um, and then uh, civilized uh, civilization wise because he's obviously in, believes in anarchy. He believes that there shouldn't be government. And we see that, um, at, you know, through his own quotes, his own words, and then social constructs. Um, there's actually a scene within the interrogation room with Batman, where he very much so r reveals how he believes social constructs are really sort of a form of the imagination. Um, but let's go ahead and get into this. So the the first scene that really starts to discuss the Joker and what the Joker might be is this one scene near the start of the film where Alfred and and Bruce are having a discussion and they're talking about the Joker um, and they're talking about where or what's happening with crime in Gotham because things have completely changed due to due to um, the Batman's appearance or due to him arising really so you have this little scene where they're in the new found bat cave and bruce is saying targeting me won't get their money back i knew the mob wouldn't go down without a fight but this is different they crossed the line and alfred responds to him and he says you crossed the line first sir you squeeze them, you hammer them to the point of desperation, and in their desperation they turn to a man they didn't fully understand. And that's the for first part of this. Because Alfred seems to get it before Bruce gets it. And I'm not even so sure, Bruce probably doesn't even understand until the end. But then Bruce states, criminals aren't complicated, Alfred. Just have to figure out what, it, what he's after. And he's talking about the Joker. And Alfred says something quite interesting in response to that he says with respect master wayne perhaps this is a man that you don't fully understand either a long time ago i was in burma my friends and i were working for the local government they were trying to buy the loyalty of tribal leaders by bribing them with precious stones but their caravans were being raided in a forest north of, Rag of rangoon by a bandit so we went looking for the stones, but in six months, we never met anybody who traded with them, with him. One day, I saw a child playing with the ruby the size of a tangerine. The bandit had been throwing them away. So Bruce asks, so why steal them? To which Alfred responds, well, because we, he thought it was good sport. Because some men aren't looking for anything logical like money. They can't be bought, bullied, reasoned, or negotiated with. Some men just want to watch the world burn. Alfred understands who the Joker is. And what this embodiment entails. Of being atheistic, anarchist, and anti-social construct or you know anti um hierarchical to the sen to to this to this extreme ex um, extent i don't want anybody who's against hierarchy to think that i'm saying if you're against hierarchy you know you're going to be evil like the joker no that's that's not what i'm saying but he's saying this this is a person who can't be bought or bullied or reasoned or negotiated with and he doesn't want anything logical like money. He's not after those things. He just wants to watch the world burn. So the question is, why? Why is the Joker this kind of character? Why is he the embodiment of this, this ugly nature? 
And just like how with the comedian, he thought he was the American dream personified, you know, in this um, um, embodied. It's similar with the Joker. But it's not that the Joker thinks he's the American dream. It's that the Joker has taken a long look at people and has come to a conclusion. And we see that here in his um, conversation with Batman in the interrogation scene where they're trying to find Rachel and Harvey Dent who've both gone missing. And they caught the Joker because uh, Gordon um, had uh, faked his death and um, led the Joker to believe he was killed. And so there's this whole scene where they're trying to escort Harvey Dent and Batman shows up and the Joker's trying to get a hold of Dent or trying to get him killed or something. And what ends up happening is um, Gordon shows up after it seems that the Batman's Batman's been defeated when he chooses not to hit Joker with his bat pod and um <clears throat> he arrests Joker. So he obviously Commissioner Gordon was not dead. He was he was still alive. And so there's this whole interrogation scene and Gordon first goes in, tries talking to him and then he says if we're going to do this, I need to get a cup of coffee and he walks out and Joker says, "Oh, good good cop bad cop routine and that's when batman shows up and he you know joker i think gordon says something like something like that that's what it actually how he responds so there's they're having this conversation and there's a point where batman is is asking him questions and you know interrogating him obviously over where rachel and harvey is and there's a part where the joker tells him don't talk like one of them you're not even if you'd like to be to them you're just a freak like me they need you right now but when they don't they'll cast you out like a leper you see their morals their code it's a bad joke and right there the joker's giving us that sign he's telling us right there he's he's anarchist he's an anarchist even he but see he even damns morals at that point he even says morals is a bad joke. And that's interesting because I think most people would say, wait a minute, morals are a bad joke. I mean, there's even individuals who are probably listening to this podcast and saying, how can you list him as an atheist when he doesn't even believe in morals because I'm an atheist and I'm a good moral individual? I'm sure you are. No one's saying that you aren't. But there's something to that. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll get on that a little bit in a little bit. Just give me a little bit more time. <laughs> so at the continuation of this, of this quote, the Joker says, It's a bad joke dropped at the first sign of trouble. They're only as good as their world allows them to be. I'll show you. When the chips are down, these, these civilized people, they'll eat each other. See, I'm not a monster. I'm just ahead of the curve. Right there. He's saying exactly what the comedian was saying when he said, what happened in the American dream? You're looking at it. The Joker is trying to tell you that he's not a monster. He's just ahead of the curve. He gets it. He gets that everyone's just living this fake reality that doesn't exist. Whether, you know, you're you're this church-going happy you know keeping up with the joneses kind of person who lives all moral and good and by the rule and follows the laws and doesn't run the red lights and he's saying it's all bad joke it's all false all of it and he's like and he gets it so because he gets it he's living it out so it's not that he's a monster because he's willing to kill and willing to do whatever he wants to do he's just ahead of the curve and in the continuation of this interrogation, we see Joker reveals a little bit more. He says a little bit more because Batman grabs him and he asks, where's Dant? He says it in that Batman voice that I can't possibly do. And then the Joker says, you have all these rules and you think they'll save you. You have all these rules and you think they'll save you. 
So he's he's giving you even further example of what he thinks of rules. That rules are basically a way for people to feel comfortable. But that's all they really are. And um, Batman responds, I have one rule. And Joker says something really cool. And he says, oh, then that's the rule you'll have to break to know the truth. <laughs> I, I don't know why I like that. I like that line so much. And Batman tells him which is, and Joker says something right here that is another glimpse into why he is the person he is and why he's ahead of the curve. He says the only sensible way to live in this world is without rules. Why would you say that? Is that true? I mean, as an audience member, as someone listening to this, do you think that's true? Most sensible way to live in this world is without rules? I mean, you have to think about what he means by rules. Rules doesn't doesn't just mean the law. Rules means morals. Just like he said a little while ago. Their morals, their code, it's a bad joke. He's talking about anything you can think of that possibly rules over human beings. Anything that creates these boundaries by which human beings are not meant to cross. Whether it's those laws that your government constructs or whether it's the laws of, of being a moral human being. Either one of those. Whether it's the social constructs we create for one another. Such as this PC culture which is just another social construct. He's saying the only sensible way to live is to put all of that down the drain. Unplug that drain and let all that stuff wash away because that's the only way you're going to live sensibly. Now before we, you know, I start to break this down even further and go into whether or not the Joker is right or wrong. There's a little bit more that, that needs to be said from the Joker in order for it to completely unwrap this we're pretty much almost unwrapped but let's look at one last point this last point is in the hospital scene with harvey dent where he's talking to harvey and he tells harvey something about what he has done to gotham and um i'm sorry but having a little bit of trouble with my computer where I'm reading the quotes um, but the Joker says I just did what I do best I took your little plan and I turned it on itself look what I did to this city with a few drums of gas and a couple of bullets Hmm. you know you know what I've noticed nobody panics when things go according to plan even if the plan is horrifying if tomorrow I tell you the I or I tell the press that like a gangbanger will get shot or a truckload of soldiers will be blown up, nobody panics because it's all part of the plan. But when I say that one little old mayor will die, well then everyone loses their minds. And Joker hands a gun to Two Face points at himself and says introduce a little anarchy upset the established order and everything becomes chaos i'm an agent i'm an agent of chaos oh and you know the thing about chaos it's fair if there was ever a line joker could give that really tells you why without a shadow of a doubt he believes in living this method it's not just because he's ahead of the curve and because he's ahead of the curve because he knows the truth about mankind which is that we follow all these ridiculous rules that that don't make any sense and that the only sensible way to live in the world is without the rules but he's telling you right there that he's an agent of chaos because he thinks chaos is the way it, you know, he's using chaos to define what he told Batman earlier on. 
which is, you know, the only sensible way to live is without rules. But one thing he says right here is he says, and this is really his motivation for being an agent of chaos, is he says, you know the thing about chaos, it's fair. Is he right? Is it fair? In a way, he's he's correct. He's almost absolutely correct. Because if you think of a world of chaos, you're thinking of a world where anyone can do anything that they want. There's no such thing as fairness because you can take anything you want to take. Nothing is limiting you. Sky is the limit, so to speak. Whereas living with rules is more like a limit of some sort. I, I makes me think of a Chris Rock joke that he told once, where he said, um, "For black people or for white people, sky is the limit. For black people, limits the sky." And it's a funny joke, but what does that mean exactly in terms of of with the Joker? Is that's what the Joker means by chaos? He means sky's limit, as opposed to limit the sky, as opposed to you living to this this degree of rules, of morals, of these codes that don't make any sense whatsoever. Whether it's you're being religious and following your government, whether you're not religious, even if you're an atheist, I guarantee you, you're still living according to some moral code. There are plenty of atheists in the world that I know that are great people, good people. I mean, there are some Christian scholars and theologians that will tell you that some of their best friends are atheists. And that they're great people. But you're holding on to some moral rules. You're holding on to a moral law. Why are you holding on to that law? This is how we know the Joker's an atheist. But I just said a moment ago that an atheist can be a moral person. An atheist can be a moral person. It doesn't mean that they're living out atheism to its fullest. It doesn't mean that at all. It doesn't mean that they aren't contradicting themselves. But this is why we know Joker's an an atheist because the joker says that there's no sensible way to live in the world but that the only sensible way to live in the world excuse me is without rules joker isn't even abiding to the decalogue to the notion to the ideas that that jesus christ and others have stated in various religions that you should love your neighbor like you love you, the golden rule. He's completely ignoring those things and thus showing that he believes in no ontology for morality. He doesn't believe there's such a thing as, as something that bestows this moral idea. He's ignoring the metaphysical and ignoring the transcendent and specifically saying to us that human beings are animals. Remember, they'll eat themselves alive. That's what he says at one point. The human beings will eat themselves. Because human beings are just animal in the end there's nothing there and why you hold on to these codes makes absolutely no sense whatsoever none it's not sensible in even in even the slightest so Joker thinks that there's nothing to hold us to anything and that it's all made up. Therefore God therefore God is completely out of the question for someone like Joker. 
because Joker will never ever succumb to something that creates or invents rules because he just doesn't think they exist. The Joker's coming from a completely evolutionary idea. That isn't to say evolution isn't true or or false for that matter. It you know or on the that I'm going to argue that it's false. It's not to say that. It's not to say that if evolution is true, we can't have morals. But what it is to say is that he's coming from that perspective. That human beings themselves will completely eat themselves alive always because that's their nature to do so. That is their nature to to be that. And that these codes that they, they live by are absolutely garbage. They're garbage because it's not true nature of human beings. True nature of human beings is not to have those. So I feel like I've hammered that enough. And so the question is, is the Joker right? Well, that depends on your ontology. If you are truly an atheist, then the consistent way to live is to live similarly to that of the Joker. This is exactly why Frederick Nietzsche wrote his his um, parable of the madman. God is dead. God is dead. We have killed him. What did Nietzsche mean by that? Nietzsche wasn't saying that literally human beings have killed God. He was saying that God is dead because of science. Because of the growth of science and human thought. People were starting to to let go of this notion of God. Nietzsche himself criticized Christianity. And we saw many postmodern philosophers do the same. I mean, Bertrand Russell is famous for his critique of Christianity. And this is why Nietzsche was worried. He was worried because he knew that if you destroy this ontology, if you destroy this foundation, that the rules that come with it will dissipate. They'll be gone also. And then what happens to mankind? What happens when there is nothing like that for them to build their rules on or for them to build a code on in order to be good people? Now, does that mean that we have to have God to be good? And that's a hard question to answer. Because it seems that belief in God is what sort of heads us in that direction of having some sort of moral rules. Even if God doesn't exist. It's the belief in God that, that puts us there. That gives us that. It, it's this, you could almost see it like Ozymandias where Ozymandias created this lie so that human beings would be good to one another. But ultimately, it was a lie. And when the lie is exposed, human beings will begin to eat each other alive once again. They will return to their zombie-like state and will begin to murder themselves. It can only last so long. So is that what is that what's happening with Christianity? Is Christianity disappearing because it's been based on a lie? Nietzsche was worried about that. He was worried. You eliminate God, you eliminate the rules. He wasn't saying you can't eliminate God. He wasn't saying that. He wasn't saying there is a God. We have to believe in God because it's the only way. No. He was just showing his worry. And it drove Nietzsche mad. Nietzsche did, did end up in a mental institution. It drove him completely mad, some of his ideas and thoughts. So, what the Joker is saying isn't necessarily wrong. But he's coming from a particular perspective, and that perspective is an entirely atheistic one. It's one that eliminates all metaphysical ontologies 
and says we are purely animal and if we are purely animal the only way we'll be happy and be fair is if we remove the boundaries if we move remove the rules the codes we don't need them but is the joker right where do the rules come from where do the codes come from and if you're an individual who doesn't think there's any metaphysical ontology as there are plenty of people who don't what is your ontology for for the codes do you think we need them maybe this insight into the joker will convince you that we don't maybe you've always believed we didn't maybe it's something else that i'm missing maybe it's the herd instinct maybe it's simply evolution maybe it's being altruistic there's plenty 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 of areas we can look at so don't you know i know i brought up religion but don't take this as me saying or stating that religion is the only way to solve all of this that's not what i'm stating but i just want it, i would just want you to understand that what is with the missing of religion like nietzsche saw you're skipping out on this metaphysical ontology and without that it's incredibly difficult to create objective rules that people have to live by it's incredibly difficult and someone like the joker who doesn't believe in those metaphysical ideas has come to the conclusion that it just doesn't exist it doesn't need to exist and that the best way to live is to live outside of those rules it's the truth in fact so that's going to do it for this episode i'll go ahead and close right there and in my next episode i'm actually going to discuss ghosts in the shell because i'm going to talk a little bit about human nature a little further only this time we're not going to talk so negatively we're going to try to define human nature and to take a look at ghost in the shell and how ghost in the shell the anime version is defining human nature for us so thank you for listening and i'll see you next time